Hello, Internet. Before I get into the topic of this video, which is covered in the title of this video, I'm going to mention that at this point of the current release, this feature that I'm, I'm testing out a bit is not ready for release and is not even available as a beta. There's a good reason for it, which will be covered later in this video. I have to modify some things in Roblox Studio to be able to even use this, and I can't recommend you necessarily do the same. Moving on from that, though, if you watched the RDC talk called The Future of Self-Expression and Communication, there was a slide that was covering inverse kinematics in your character. Not a whole lot was mentioned beyond this single slide, but after talking to a couple of Roblox engineers about it, they actually told me ahead of time to pay attention for this part of the presentation because they knew about my woes of inverse kinematics and nexosphere character model to be on the lookout for this and the beta in the future. I wasn't really waiting to, to wait for the beta, so I decided to figure out if I could access this now, and the answer is yes. And from what I could tell on Twitter and the develop forum, I might be the first to be exploring this. But let's say you want to look at this new inverse kinematics thing. The first thing you need to do is modify some feature flags to enable it. Before I go into showing what feature flags to enable, I first should give a warning about feature flags. Feature flags should not really be touched unless you know what you're doing, and even if you know what you're doing, you risk data corruption or just an unstable version of Roblox Studio while you have them enabled. They are meant to be controlled by Roblox to control features, and if you're modifying them on your own end, you could be enabling or disabling some functionality that they don't expect to be enabled and is either not complete, unstable, corrupts data, or something along those lines. So I do not suggest doing it. In fact, this whole place file that I have for testing stuff could just become corrupted one day. You should only be doing this on a, a copy of your data, not your live version, and only if you're willing to risk either data being lost or just the work becoming irrelevant as things change. This is not a released feature and not even a beta feature. So, warning aside, I'm also using a version of Roblox that has just a convenient way to view feature flags, which is the flag editor. I've flipped two feature flags to be on. You only really need the first one from what I can tell. I can control enabled. The other one is just to expose the beta feature, which I'll show in a moment, which is how I think they will be rolling this out. But this is the feature flag to probably enable. You can use your tool of choice if you have one, such as Maximum ADHD's Mod Manager or Grape Juice if you're on Linux. Or if you're or if you're brave enough to use Roblox internal like I am, you can use that, but I'm not going to show you how to enable it because I do not want Roblox to change how Roblox internal gets enabled. Bes beside that though, once you actually have it enabled, you can also see how they probably will be rolling this out in a bit. So the way that this will probably be rolling out in the future is there's going to be a beta release called IK controls with the description that you can read just by pausing the video and looking at it. I don't know if it's going to be enabled by default or disabled by default. I'm guessing it's going to be opt-in for the beta. If you're opt-in to the beta, whenever this rolls out, you should be able to use and also have this new instance called IK control work. At the moment right now, this is only a single instance. I have just a very generic arm that is kind of set up like a Roblox arm where it has what would be a root section like the upper torso, an upper section, lower section, and the end. And this new instance is called IK Control. The docs for it are public at this point, so you can read up on it now if you don't want to actually test it. There are a couple requirements to use it. First off, you need an either an animation controller or a humanoid. Both work. And I don't think the, the docs say this. You also need the animator to exist. If it is missing, such as if you create an animation control and a humanoid and you don't add this in, this will not work, and it will not give you any easy indicator to tell you that this is not working. IK Control will also override animations depending on when the properties that is set. At the moment, there are a couple of properties. This, well, this is what you get when you insert it for the first time. There are a couple of properties that aren't 100% clear what they mean until you look at the docs or try them out for a bit. So. The first property in this is called chain root. This specifies the furthest instance down the tree from the root object, which in this case is this red part, it will be able to modify to go to its target. If you're doing something in ARM, you'd want to do like the upper section of the ARM. 
Or if you're doing a leg, you do the upper section of the leg. It depends on what you want to do. And then the other end of the spectrum is the end effector. This is the outermost part that it will modify for the inverse kinematics, which is obviously going to be your hand, your foot, maybe your head if you have a use case for that, or whatever you need. It's not necessarily tied to the humanoid as I'm using an animation controller, and the parts can be arbitrary. Whether you get the desired effect is up to be seen. This will be rolling out in beta, and if you have a use case for this, definitely check it out and provide feedback when it actually does happen. The other ones I'll show once I have this running are pull and target. Priority, from what I could tell, assigns the priority of the of the IK controller if you have multiple. And weight is kind of like animations where how much it's each one is weighed if you have multiple of them. This will also work towards animations. A weight of one will completely override an animation, while, and then zero will happen because so the animation that is playing on the character will be fully utilized, and this will not not be used, and then in between will go between the two. So if I were to run it, you're going to see that there's nothing going on. That is because it is not complete in this form. If I go back to the IK controller, there's two other things I need to specify for it to work. The first thing you need to specify is a target. It needs to have something that is a C-frame or position. So that could be an attachment or it could be a part. The other thing you need to do is specify the type. I'm guessing before the release, this null type is going to change to something else like none or something, because null is not really much of a term that you see in Lua where we have nil instead of null. It's more in the realm of C and C++. There are a couple different types, and I'm guessing the most used type is going to be transform. What transform will do is it will try to move the outermost part, the, the end effector, to have its joint part be wherever the C-frame of the thing you have targeted, which again, can be the part or can be an attachment. When you have transform, it's gonna do both the position and rotation. So if I were to oh, say rotate the part, I'm just gonna disable the grid like this, it will follow it. And if I were to move it, it will also move. It's pretty neat. There are other properties, or there are other options for the type, such as being able to only go to the position or only manage the rotation. Look at in length, I haven't fully looked at. The docs should contain what they do. And if they, oh yeah, they do. But transform is probably going to be the one that's going to be used the most. Now, there's also this other property called pull, which I'm sure there's a good reason behind the name, I'm not fully familiar with inverse kinematics on other solutions like Blender, Pull will specify what it tries to target for where it actually bends. I Again, it could be a part or it can be an attachment like this. And as you can see, as I have it with this part, it changes where it actually attempts to target the actual bending of the arm. Some other nice properties is it will block you from fully extending the arm and it'll just try to go to it if it's too extended. And honestly, it works quite well. However, at this point, this gets into the part of it's not quite ready for a release. Just gonna get rid of the poll for this. For those who are seeing what I post on Twitter, one of the flaws currently is what happens if you move around in world space, such as if you rotate this. When it's like this, it looks just fine. This is how I'd expect it to bend. But if you start rotating it, Notice how the sections of the arm are starting to just rotate. If you were to have a gun or something like this, or anything else that you need to hold, guns are probably where going to be used a lot for this, for procedure animations, arms randomly just rotating like this is going to be very unnatural. There's a good reason why, and there's probably more behind the scenes, for why this is, hasn't been rolled out as a beta yet. It has existed in Roblox's API for two releases now, and I'm only checking out on the current release. And I'm guessing there is more to go, including resolving this and probably resolving a couple other things. It kind of seems like it's a bit under-constrained at the moment, but I could be wrong. There's many engineers working on this, and I'm sure they will create a very good solution before it's ready for a beta rollout. Otherwise, there will be a lot of people leaving feedback about this bug. When it actually does roll out, though, make sure to give it a shot, because it is very cool. Just remember the 
requirement of the animator and such because it will not be clear when it's not working for you. When Ashley does go live, give it a shot though. Leave feedback for this because this is a cool feature. And for me, I have three projects that I'll be using it on. Nexusphere character model is the obvious one. And for a while, it has actually had a bug bounty to actually try to resolve this problem because this is what I was dealing with. And for me, the bigger problem was I was copying this type of code between other projects. The Innovation in Grail Guns, which is this, has this flaw too, as well as the disinfectors that I use by the Innovation in Thermal Power Plant. This is all open source, by the way, if anyone wants to look at it. I already tried out the IK config on this, which I will actually show off. And it works pretty well, as mentioned before, until you rotate. Notice how my arm is now inverted. This stuff is cool, and I'm glad Roblox is finally giving us a way to do procedural animations at a runtime without having to figure out all the math ourselves. But there's still some more that needs to be worked on. I look forward to see where this is going over the next couple of releases and when it actually goes into beta. This will probably be a Nexus Sphere character model version 2.5.0, unless there's another version between now and then. And yeah, I look forward to seeing where this goes, because this is very interesting. And for a lot of games, this will be a game changer because this will give us the tools we need to do procedural animations. And that is all.